Joseph has been gone to the Learn Academy basic training for nine weeks, and today we're going to load up in the bus and go to his graduation. I don't think all the little ones spotted him. We kept trying to point him out, but they couldn't count across as they were moving. The graduation ceremony was so impressive. All the recruits were up there on stage in their dress uniforms, and they sang a couple of hymns. Guys were yelling it out there like, hey, hey. It sounded really weird. from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Tuesday, November 2nd, and we have an update on Josh Duggar's case. I did a video yesterday where we talked about the order that he was not going to be using the alibi defense, apparently, and now the prosecutors are asking that if convicted, he forfeit his computer. Okay, so Josh Duggar has an allegation of what's called forfeiture. And in the allegation of forfeiture in his case, in the forfeiture allegation in his case, it states that upon conviction of any count of this indictment, the defendant shall forfeit to the United States pursuant to 18 United States Code Section 2553 uh, any visual depictions described, like books, magazine, periodicals, videotapes, all of that. Any property, real or personal, constituting or traceable to gross profits or other proceeds obtained from the offenses in the indictment. Any property, real or personal, including any and all computer equipment used or intended to be used to commit or to promote the commission of the offenses in the indictment or any property traceable to such property including but not limited to computer equipment used in the commission of the offenses in the indictment if any of the pro property is subject to forfeiture as a result of any act of omission of the defendants they can cannot be located has been transferred or sold has been placed beyond the jurisdiction has been substantially diminished or value has been commingled with other property which cannot be subdivided without difficulty it is the intent of the united states pursuant to title 18 united states code incorporating by reference that they would seek forfeiture of any property of said defendants upon the value of the forfeited property so they stated this in the indictment that if he's convicted upon anything they would request forfeiture and they noted multiple times that they would request forfeiture of any computers so their bill of particulars, which was actually filed yesterday, the prosecutors in the case set, say that they stated this. In the forfeiture allegation in the indictment, the government designated that property may be subject to forfeiture pursuant to Title 18, United States Code 2253. The government provides notice of its intention to seek the forfeiture of the following property, an HP desktop all-in-one model 27A257C. So, so right now, the only thing that it seems like they will be requesting for forfeiture for sure is his computer. The computer, the HP all-in-one desktop, was the only one that had evidence of the downloads. It was the only one that had the videos on it. It was the only one that had any of the photographs on it. So it was the one that had the Tor browser on it. It was the one that had the peer-to-peer -peer network on it. It had the Covenant Eyes installed on it. He had hundreds of deleted uh, horrible content on there. So there was a lot of the evidence that was on there. So they're saying that because of that, the photographs are all on there, the videos are on the, there, they do not want him to have this back. I don't know if they will do any more bill of particulars, if they determine that there are assets that he might have made as a result of this. I don't know if they will do another bill of particulars in this case. I, at this point, I'm not clear about that. So at this point, they're saying that the computer they want when he is indicted or when he is convicted. Something that I was thinking about that could be why they're actually making this statement known is that Josh has been very 
uh, and his attorneys have been very sort of obsessed about this computer, acting like they are searching it without a warrant, that the property is belongs to Josh, that the computer is his and they are just sort of keeping it for safekeeping and that unless they want to do further analysis or anything on this, that they would have to have a warrant. If you recall, that was a huge part of one of his motions to dismiss. In the response from the judge, he basically stated that the property was seized and it was not his and they have the right to search it and they didn't need an ongoing warrant. So I do think part of this is reminding Josh like, hey, this computer you have is not yours anymore and if you're convicted, we're taking this to leave out this argument that it belongs to him. So they're basically in a way making it known to Josh, you don't own this anymore. As long as you're convicted, this belongs to us. And this will then prevent Josh or anyone in the Duggars from gaining any access to what is on that computer, which obviously keeps eyes away from what's on that content. It keeps that, that those videos completely uh, out of the world in terms of, you know, other people being able to download it, view it, anything. It removes the opportunity for this to further go into the dark web and into the market for CSAM. So Josh Duggar's computer will be seized by the government. And I don't know if he actually even has assets. You know, one of the things that we were talking about is that he was moving money and moving things into Anna's name. And it could be that he's doing that because he might be preparing for the fact that he is going to be going away to prison and he knows that the property has can't be in his names anymore. Or I don't know if they do an analysis of his income and they find that he does have and has received money as a result of this world, maybe. I'm less inclined to actually believe that he could have a forfeiture of assets, particularly right now, because we are like three, four weeks away from his trial and they have not added, dis they have not added production or uh, creation. So he is not being charged with manufacturing of this content. He is re being charged with like downloading, receiving, which is sort of like distrib distribution in a way because he was indirectly distributing it by allowing people to download it from him and then possession of it. So he has two really big charges, but he's not charged with manufacturing. And if you're not manufacturing, then I don't know if you're actually making money in this. It's they have not specified, and I don't know if that would come out at all in trial or not. So we are we are dealing with that uh, in regards to this case. Okay, so in a couple weeks, there will be the pre-trial, which will be on November 18th, and then the trial is actually scheduled for November 30th. And at this point, they have not disclosed like who the witnesses are. We don't know from a defense standpoint or from a prosecution standpoint that there will be witnesses. But I'm, I have to remind you guys that there's a protective order on this case. And so I believe that because of the protective order, there will be child witnesses in this case. So one of the stipulations of Josh's case and for the trial is that they, the child victims, are protected from their identities and who they are, their social media, anything being known to the public. And if any of these minors testify in court, that will not be public. So if they decide to call one of them, um, Josh and the, like, the public would be removed. It would be done in a closed court. And Josh is a not allowed to contact any of these people. So with a protective order in place like that, that does make me feel like there could potentially be juveniles in this case that will actually testify. There's been a lot of rumors circulating about who those uh, juveniles could be. Obviously, I'm not going to speculate. I just think that it's gonna be really heartbreaking for any child to have to go up and testify in this case. and. To me, it's very selfish that anyone like Josh, knowing there's child victims in this, that he would force a child to have to be placed in that kind of situation. It's also very heartbreaking to me that the Duggars would also be 
uh, putting a child in this situation if there's going to be child testimony. I, I just, to me, it seems so appalling. One thing I've noticed more than anything, and I see it in comments all the time by you guys, is that there's been no discussion by the Duggars about the victims and how can they be such staunch, you know, Christians that love people and care about the families when they don't seem to care about the victims in this case. And I can't tell you. All I can say is that it likely is either incredible denial by the Duggars or they don't want to acknowledge the severity of the situation. They would also be acknowledging the severity of the situation and also be implicating his guilt if they actually said like something about the victims. So if they're going to stand on his innocence, they have to stand in the fact that it wasn't him that did that by indirectly not acknowledging that kids were involved in this, which is heart wrenching. I will, I will state that Jill and Ginger were very outright and said that they were praying for the child victims and wanted justice for them in this case. So there at least are a couple Duggars that do want justice served for those victims. So I will keep you posted as more things come out. And if there's anything you know or have tips, make sure you reach out uh, at withoutacrystalball78 at gmail.com. And we will always have more Duggar content for you because it's like your favorite thing in the world. All right, you guys, hope you have a great day. Bye.